welcome. Today we're talking radiation protection, one of the most important concepts of nuclear medicine. It is our responsibility to keep ourselves, the patients, the general public, and the environment safe from the harmful effects of radiation. We can use proper technique when handling, receiving, and administering radio pharmaceuticals to keep our exposure as low as reasonably achievable, a concept known as ALERA. It has three main principles, time, distance, and shielding, and there are math formulas to help us implement all of those. Today we're doing a thyroid scan in my department, and I've brought in my mathematician Claude here to help us do the math. We have a standing order of bulk technesium 99 m and every day we receive 40 millicuries of that. What would be the exposure to my hands if I just grabbed that vial with no shielding my bare hands? Well, let's think about the gamma constant. This is a number that basically tells us the radius per hour we would be exposed to per millicurie at one centimeter. My source is 40 millicuries, so that's my activity. If I'm grabbing it with my hand, my distance is pretty much none. We're going to use one centimeter. And then I'm just going to multiply that times my gamma constant. And what do I get? 23.6 rankins per hour. 23,600 milliamps per hour. I'm not going to grab it with my hands. Let's use my tongs. My tongues are 20 centimeters long, so I'm going to use the same formula and my distance from the source is now going to be 20 centimeters. We get 0.059 rankins per hour or 59 millirankins per hour. Drastically lower than before, so we see how that distance principle of Alara works. Also, we can talk shielding. A half value layer is the thickness of an attenuator that will reduce the intensity of a beam of radiation by half. This is a set number for each attenuator for each radionuclide. I'm going to use lead as my attenuator, and I have technesium 99M as my radioisotope. The half value layer for this combination in particular is 0.27 millimeters. What thickness of lead would I need to reduce the exposure from this vial down to a level acceptable in public areas? NRC regulations are very specific that in public areas, radiation exposure cannot exceed 2 milligrams in any hour. 2 milliamps in any hour for a photon producing source like this one is equivalent to 2 milliricans per hour. I'm going to pull up that post decay equation we might be familiar with and switch out some of the variables to make it work for us. So instead of activity, I'm going to use intensity. Instead of time, I'm going to use thickness of attenuator. And instead of half life, we're using half value layer. Then we can work out that formula so that we are solving for thickness of attenuator rather than final intensity. And let's see how that works out. I know my half value layer is 0.27 millimeters. Then I take the natural log of 23,600 divided by two, which is my initial intensity divided by my final intensity because I want it to be two millirankins per hour, and divide the whole thing by 0.693. And we get 3.65 millimeters. So if I shield this vial with 3.65 millimeters of lead, the intensity would be reduced down to a level safe for public areas. That's made me think of the linear attenuation coefficient. And this is a number that gives us an idea of the attenuation that a material is capable of. It is proportional to the atomic number and the thickness of the attenuator and inversely proportional to the photon energy. Well, technesium 99M has a relatively low energy. I'm using lead, which has a high atomic number, so I expect a decent linear attenuation coefficient. It's pretty easy to solve for. We can just take 0.693 and divide it by the half value layer in centimeters. So I knew it was 0.27 millimeters. Let's convert that to centimeters, which is 0.027 centimeters, and then solve. So 0.693 divided by 0.027, and we get 25.7. Linear attenuation coefficient is 25.7. Now what do I do when I receive a package? I survey and wipe it. When I wipe it, I'm counting that light in my well counter. And I record 350 counts per minute at surface. I know my background was 200 counts per minute. And the efficiency of my well counter is 37%. So how many disintegrations per minute? We get our gross counts, which is 350, subtract our background counts, 200, and divide by the efficiency of the well counter in decimal form, which is 0.37. And I get 405 disintegrations per minute. This is well below the trigger level of 6,600 disintegrations per minute, so no contamination, we can proceed and open the package. Okay, so we've opened our package, and now I draw up my dose. So I draw up 8 millicuries, and I put a 3 millimeter lead syringe shield on that dose. What is the intensity of that dose now that it's shielded? 
First of all, I need to find out the intensity of the dose before shielding. So I'm quickly going to go back to that gamma constant. And instead of 12 with 8 molecules of my activity, not 1 centimeter, 10 to 0.59. Okay, so we have 4.72 magnets per hour or 4,720 milliregnets per hour. I put on a 3 millimeter syringe shield. I'm going to use that intensity formula from earlier and plug in my initial intensity, which is 4,720 milliregnets per hour times our large number to the power of negative 0.693 divided by thickness of attenuator divided by half value layer, so that's 3 millimeters divided by 0.27 millimeters. Put that all in the calculator and we get 2.14 milliregnets per hour. I inject my patient, I wait 20 minutes because this is a thyroid scan and I go to set them up under the camera. We know that in nuclear medicine, one of our greatest sources of radiation is actually the patient themselves. At one meter from the patient, I'm exposed to 0.3 milliregnets per hour. What would be my exposure then if I'm standing closer to the patient, like 36 centimeters, for example? Well, let's use that inverse square law. My initial intensity is 0.3 milliregnets per hour. And I'm standing at 1 meter, so I'm going to convert that to centimeters and go with 100 centimeters squared. Equals my second intensity, which is my unknown. Multiply times my new distance, which is 36 centimeters squared. To isolate my final intensity, I just divide both sides by 36 squared. And what do I get? 2.3 milligrams per hour. Now let's think about that radioisotope's effective half-life. We know that the physical half-life of technetium is 6 hours and the biological half-life of technetium is 24 hours. So it's the effective half-life. Well, I can take that physical half-life, multiply it by biological half-life, divide that times physical half-life plus biological half-life. And we get 4.8 hours. So that's great, we've made it. Thank you very much, Clone, for your help. We saw how math can help us along the way so that we maintain proper technique and radiation protection practices. Thanks for watching, stay safe, stay healthy.